guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to the Q&A. Today I'm going to talk about a skin condition that is incredibly common and you guys have asked me a fair number of times if I could do a Q&A on it. You asked me a lot of questions and that is tinea versicolor, or also known as pityriasis versicolor. Um, this is a common yeast uh, skin infection uh, that appears as patches on the body of brown spots, white spots, pink spots. It can occur oftentimes on the upper trunk, on the upper chest, the back, um, in the, on, the, on the flanks, the sides of the body. It can also occur on the neck, but honestly, it can really occur anywhere on the body. It is most common in, in young adults. Uh, it's also more common in men than in women. Um, however, it can occur in any age group and it can occur in young children as well as older adults. And malassezia is the causative yeast that, play, that is responsible for this skin condition. Malassezia is a yeast that is part of our normal skin flora. That it, it resides on the surface of the skin and within the, within the hair follicles. And not only is it responsible for this skin condition that I'm talking about today, but it's also responsible for dandruff on the scalp, seborrheic dermatitis on the face and body, as well as it also plays a contributory role in other skin diseases like acne and rosacea. Tinea versicolor is also known as pityriasis versicolor, and pityriasis is a term that we use in dermatology a lot that is kind of a descriptor term, and specifically, it is a term that we use when a skin lesion has a particular type of scaliness to it. Um, yes, in dermatology, we describe everything as a very descriptive, a very descriptive uh, specialty of medicine many many different ways of describing things and we describe we describe the scale on things for example in psoriasis the scale of psoriasis is often referred to as psoriasiform or micaceous and that it kind of is large large flakes of scales that are layered one on top of the other if you side light them they kind of have that reflective glint like mica but in this skin condition that i'm talking about today tinea versicolor also known as pityriasis uh, versus color, it has a pityriasiform uh, scale, and that means uh, br appearing like bran flakes. Um, pityriasis uh, it means bran, so it's, it's kind of a branny looking looking scale to it, as opposed to as opposed to like a psoriasiform scale. So we get we get really descriptive in dermatology, and that is our language, and that is how we communicate with one another uh, back and forth about patients. That that's those are the medical terms that we use to describe things. The reason I'm telling you guys this is not, uh, you know, to bore you to tears. Maybe we have some budding dermatologists out there, but uh, it's to help avoid any confusion. If you have a skin condition that starts with uh, the name pityriasis, uh, I don't want to confuse you. This is today. I'm talking about uh, pityriasis versicolor, but pityriasis is just a descriptive term, and it it goes along with some other diseases like uh, pityriasis alba. Um, and pityriasis rosea, pityriasis eminentasia. So there are a variety of skin diseases in dermatology that start with the name pityriasis. So hopefully this doesn't confuse you, but pityriasis versicolor, also called tinea versicolor. We like to have a lot of different names for things. What can I say? Um, but yeah, it occurs uh, because this little yeast that naturally lives on our body, it thrives in oily areas of the body, areas of the body that are subject to being more sweaty. And so that's part of the reason why it is more common in younger adolescents around puberty uh, when sebum production is high. And then, you know, in older adults when our sebum production kind of go, uh, goes down. But it's not to say they can't get it, but you know, being oily is a risk factor. Living in a, cl a climate that is humid and hot also is a risk factor, so it tends to be a more of an issue in tropical climates. It's, it's very common here in Houston. Um, and being uh, in a situation where you have you sweat a lot, like for example, if you work in a profession where you wear, where you wear like a, um, 
like coveralls that don't breathe particularly well and you sweat a lot, you know, maybe you're, you're a mechanic or a plumber or something uh, and you're, you're kind of trapped in your clothes, working, sweating a lot, that is a risk factor for, for the skin condition because it's just kind of a hot, sweaty environment and that little yeast is like, yeah, I'm here and I'm gonna do my thing and make this rash and I'm gonna annoy you with it. And the, I, so I talked about the name pityriasis and what that means, but the other part of the name versicolor refers to the fact that there are various colors, basically. Brown is one color, and the brown color is a result of the little yeast can increase the number of kind of pigment molecule sizes, I guess you might say, in the pigment cells and result in brown discoloration. It also can result in little pink patches uh, that's the result of, of the yeast causing inflammation to come in the skin in those scaly pink patches. And then thirdly, it can cause little white patches. And the little white patches are due to the fact that malassezia makes uh, something called a dicarboxylic acid that can actually put the brakes on pigment and cause, cause white spots. Um, so, you know, in any given individual, the rash can be a combination of all three, pig, all three, all three types of spots, brown spots, pink spots, white spots. Some people may just have brown spots and some people, particularly after the tinea versicolor has been treated, are often left with white spots. And it's very common in dermatology, it's an easy diagnosis to make, uh, but uh, there are a few tests that you know can be done to kind of prove that it's malassezia or tinea versicolor. Uh, one such test that's really, uh, you know, commonly used in, der in dermatology in the clinic is very easy and can be, can be gratifying uh, is to shine what's called a Woods lamp, which is a, basically a type of a black light lamp. And the little yeast in the skin actually fluoresces like, like one of those old school black, uh, black light posters. Yeah, malassezia will fluoresce uh, green, and so you can actually see it with the black, with the with the wood lamp. It will fluoresce kind of a yellowish green. When it's within the the malassezia that's actually in the hair follicle, will sometimes be a little blue white, um, and that's one helpful way to do it. Um, also, you know, we can scrape off some of that scaly stuff. We can scrape it off onto, onto a glass slide and look at it under the microscope and you can see the little malassezia yeast there in that, particularly in the brown, particularly in brown scaly spots, you can really, you can really find, find a lot of the malassezia in that scaly stuff. And it looks like, um, it's described, it looks like spaghetti and meatballs under the microscope. So for those of you who are budding dermatologists out there, if you are battling with pityriasis versicolor or tinea versicolor tv we just call it tv <laughs> but we just call it tv and short for tinea versicolor um and if you are suffering with tv what you need to be aware of is that it'll go away with these treatments that i'll talk about but it frequently comes back and it frequently comes back when you are in a situation where those kind of risk factors are kicked up for example you know when summer comes around again things get hot and sweaty um, if you if you use uh, a lot of oils and um, body oils on the skin that also can can cause this problem to kind of flare and come back the little yeast thrives in oily oily surfaces and oils so the use of, of bath oils body oils can can worsen it um, and then you know like I said when when you're hot and sweaty um, and if you're in the gym working out a lot and you wear you wear like you know kind of typical ath athletic wear and you don't you don't take it off right away and you stay hanging out in that sweaty those sweaty clothes that's also a risk factor for this little guy kind of reappearing so be aware of that so it will it will get better and it will often come back and when it comes back the treatments are usually restarted um, but it's not dangerous and the other thing that you should be aware of is that Oftentimes what, what happens is that once the rash is treated and the, the yeast are, you know, are controlled, those little white spots that I mentioned, they, will stick, they can stick around for a long time. The white spots are just kind of your skin cells that are, you know, kind of stunned after the fact. They're still not making pigment the way that they were because of that yeast dicarboxylic acid. 
and they take a little bit of time to repigment. But the presence of just the white spots with no scaliness, it doesn't indicate that there is that there's fungus there. So that doesn't warrant more treatment. It's just it's just something you kind of had to be patient with, and it fades and goes back to your normal skin color with time. Um, but anyways, what what things are used to treat the rash when it's active, when it's scaly? Uh, mostly topical form, mostly topical antifungals. Um, I have a whole video talking about zinc pyrithione, which is an active ingredient in anti-dandruff shampoos. Zinc pyrithione containing anti-dandruff shampoo or another active ingredient, selenium sulfide in anti-dandruff shampoos. Selenium sulfide is what's in Selsun Blue, for example. Either one of those anti-dandruff shampoos can be lathered to the body areas that are afflicted by tinea versicolor in the shower. You leave it on the skin for about 10 minutes and then you rinse it off and you repeat this nightly for like two weeks and that will, that will, will get that malassezia kind of in check and help the skin rash get better. And then thereafter, if you are somebody who suffers with frequent uh, recurrences and flares of it, you can actually do that little body mask treatment, you know, on a weekly basis, monthly basis. If you, so long as you remember to do it, it kind of it kind of puts puts things in your favor for reducing the chances that 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 little bugger will flare down the road. Um, so for example, say you know you're going to be going going somewhere where it's hot and humid, doing this in advance, doing this while you're while you're in that environment can kind of help help keep it from from coming back. Other antifungals that are also effective are um, ketoconazole works great for this. Uh, this was in Nizerol shampoo. Uh, again, can be lathered the body in the same way. There's also a 2% ketoconazole prescri uh, prescription cream that can be put on the, the affected area. The shampoos are a little bit more cost effective, however, um, and that is hard, is, it can be harder to get the cream all over the entire body. Uh, you know, the cream's are usually in a smaller tube. So depending on how extensive it is, the shampoo might actually be a more rational way to go for you. And you know, there, it's not as though the shampoo method is not as good as a prescription. Sometimes people are under the impression that if, they use a if they're using a prescription, they're using a better treatment. And that's not usually the case. That's not always the case, particularly in dermatology. We have so many things over the counter that are effective treatments um, that, you know, that's, that's important to understand. Getting a prescription cream does not necessarily mean you are getting a better treatment than, than using the anti-dandruff shampoo. Um, but outside of the anti-dandruff shampoo, the ketoconazole, the Nizerol, I'll list some of these down below for you guys, by the way, in the description box. Um, but uh, the other alternative, though, is an oral antifungal medication. Uh, for example, the oral antifungal that I frequently prescribe is fluconazole. Um, another one is one called itraconazole um, that can be used for this. And those are helpful just to kind of get, a, uh, get, get the rash to clear up. Um, but again, if you don't if you don't do some sort of maintenance thing, it will it, it can come back. Um, and the way, but if you have been prescribed the oral antifungal, here is a little trick for you: that, is that after you take the pill, about an hour after you take the pill, it is a good idea to go to the gym and work out and get your skin really sweaty. And the reason for this is that the active metabolite of the drug comes out into your comes out through your sweat. So you want to get a good sweat going so that you get that active metabolite out onto the skin through the through the pores, through the hair follicle, um, and it will get there. And then what you want to do, even though it seems counterintuitive, is to hang out in your sweat for about two hours before bathing. So to let that to let that active metabolite really get in there and get to get to where it needs to go. And then you can can rinse it off and take a shower. I know that's counterintuitive. I always tell you guys you should you know, rinse your skin as soon as you get done working out to remove sweat. This is one situation where you also, you actually want to hang out in your sweat uh, to let that active, active metabolite of the antifungal really get in there and, and get, get, get rid of, get rid of the little malassezia. So yeah, those are the common treatments, uh, but you know, there's really not a cure for it and uh, it often comes back. Personally, I had it when I was a teenager a lot on my thighs related to wearing ballet tights, for example, all the time and just hanging out in my ballet clothes all the time. Um, so I was always wearing tights and um, leotards. I lived in the South, it was very humid, very hot. 
um, and I work up a lot of sweat in, in ballet and then hang out my sweaty tights at, you know, and I had a little, little flares of, of malacia, of tinea versicolor, like on my thighs and doing the shampoo thing got rid of it for me. And then, you know, I kind of outgrew, I kind of outgrew that and it hasn't ever been a problem for me again, but for many people it is, it is a battle and something that they deal with on a regular basis. The oral antifungal medications can be really helpful. Um, I find that they're, they're a good thing to, to go to in the situation where say you have, say it's your wedding or something and you're wearing, you want to wear a dress that doesn't have, uh, you know, where your back is exposed and you've got this unsightly rash and you're like, I cannot have this, then the oral medication is, is helpful um, because it, it just works quicker. Uh, but you know, it's all, it's all, you know, more or less going to do the same thing and it will, it can and often does come back. So wrap your head around that, uh, you know, there's not a cure for it, but it's not deadly. Um, so yeah, these things can really help though, to keep it in control. Again, I will list down below in the description box, uh, the over the counter stuff that uh, is helpful for this. But I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.